Are you ready for 81 life-changing home hacks? From ingenious storage solutions, brilliant cleaning ideas, and clever DIY projects, these tips and tricks will revolutionize the way you organize, clean, and style your home. Contact lens cases are so versatile. You can pick up a package of five at the Dollar Tree, and of course you can store your contacts in here, but there are so many other items that you can place in these lens cases. The first thing is some lotions and soap. If you are traveling and you just wanna take a carry-on suitcase with you, you've gotta be aware of the liquids that you take. So what you can do is add some lotion on one side, soap on the other. You could put in some face creams, a small amount of shampoo and conditioner, a little bit of sunscreen, this contact lens case can store items like this so easily. Another item that you could put in these contact lens cases is some jewelry. You could take some necklaces, some thin necklaces, and put them on either side. Separating them would make sure that they didn't get tangled up together. You could also take some earrings or some small studs, cufflinks, small rings, and put those in the slots as well. These contact lens cases are also great for storing a small amount of medicine. You could put some Advil or Tylenol in these. Not only are these great for traveling, but you could also put these contact lens cases in your purse, a diaper bag, or in your car glove box. These contact lens cases are so versatile, compact, and very convenient. Next, I'm going to show you how to layer necklaces that are the same length. So what you're going to want to do is take your necklaces, put them on, put them around your neck and make sure that they are unclasped. Then you're gonna take the claw end of one of the necklaces and attach it to the hooks on the other necklace. So do that for both of your necklaces. Just attach them to the opposite necklace and you can flip them around, turn them around and now you can pull it and look, now you can layer your necklaces to the desired length that you want. You can do it tight, you can do it a little bit longer, but how cool is that? So if you have two necklaces that are the same length, but you want a little variety, you want a different length on them, this is a great hack. My hot glue gun does not have a stand to hold it upright. So I'm always putting it on a plate or propping it up against something. It's really cumbersome and hard to handle, but would you believe that a Dollar Tree binder clip is going to help us out? What I'm gonna do is take this binder clip and turn it on its side. Then I'm gonna get my hot glue gun and put the tip through the metal clip. You have to press it in there fairly hard, but it will hold your hot glue gun straight up. Now I don't have to worry about it tipping or falling over. I can just prop it up on these binder clips and it will hold it upright. Do you need a quick solution for baby proofing? Well, this tension rod is going to help us baby proof our drawers. What I'm gonna do is take the tension rod and size it to the size that will fit from the underside of my countertop to the floor. Then I pulled my cabinets out about a quarter of the way. I took the tension rod and slid it down the center of each of the handles on my drawers. Then I shut the drawers all at the same time. Then I gave the tension rod one final twist to make sure it was really tight. Now our drawers are stuck in place. It's gonna be really hard for those little ones to open these drawers now. If you need a quick solution for baby proofing your drawers, this tension rod is a clever and easy remedy. Do you ever have a pillowcase that is too large for your pillow? It just kind of looks ridiculous. Well, let me show you a quick 10 second hack that will fix that. All you need to do is take the end of the pillowcase. I put the excess pillowcase back inside. I pulled it tightly and flattened it out. Then I could flip it over and it looks like this pillowcase is an exact match for this pillow. So don't worry if your pillowcase does not fit your pillow. This is a great hack that will make it appear like it's the correct size. These Dollar Tree glass cases are another one of those items that are so versatile. So of course you can store your glasses in here, but there are so many more items that you can put in here as well. My daughter loves to color and it is something that keeps her busy when we are running errands, but I don't like to have crayons and glue and all kinds of crafting items scattered throughout my purse. So this is a great way to store those items. 
What I did was I took some glue sticks, an eraser, some crayons, and pens, and put them inside of these glasses case. I stacked them all in there and then closed the case. This is a perfect way to store all of these art supplies. You can put them in a suitcase, a backpack, or in your purse. You can also create a mini first aid kit. I got some antibiotic ointment, batteries, safety pins, band-aids, and a little bit of gauze, and I put them inside of this case. This is an easy way to keep all of those emergency supply items in one easy to locate container. Did you know that you can clean your car headlights with some WD-40? My teenager's car has the grimiest, the dirtiest, the foggiest headlights that you've ever seen. And we definitely need to clean them. So what I'm gonna do is take my WD-40 and spray it onto the headlights. I could see an immediate change. Once the headlight was covered in the WD-40, I took a clean rag and I wiped the WD-40 all over the headlights. The WD-40 can clean car headlights because it contains solvents, which can dissolve the grime, dirt, and the oils that accumulate on the surface of the headlights over time. Once that headlight looked clean to me, I moved on to the other headlight and did the exact same thing over there. You guys, check out these results from the before to now. They were cleaned in a matter of minutes and the results are incredible. When you buy fruits and vegetables at the store, they look pretty clean, right? So you bring them home, you might rinse them off, and you think that you're good to go. Well, let me show you what I did with my strawberries. I got a container. This container has a strainer and I purchased it for a few dollars at Burlington Coat Factory. I added my strawberries to this strainer and then I filled it up to the top with water. You want your strawberries or whatever fruit that you're using to be able to be submerged in the water. Then I took a tablespoon of baking soda and I sprinkled it over the top of the strawberries. Then I mixed it up really well. At this point, you're just gonna leave it alone for 20 minutes. Once the 20 minutes was up, I came back and I removed the strainer from the container. You guys, look at that water. That's so gross. When you add baking soda to water, it can break down and remove dirt, debris, and pesticide residues from the surface of the fruits and vegetables. So I dumped this dirty, dirty water and then I rinsed off my strawberries really well and then added them back to the container. Now I feel very confident about feeding my family these strawberries because I know that they are clean and pesticide free. When I was a child, we used to wash our windows with newspapers. My mom would save the newspapers that came to the house every single day. Once they were done reading them, she would make a pile of these newspapers and we would use them to wash windows. So we're gonna do something very similar to that today. But first, let's make an all natural window cleaning solution. What I did was I got some vinegar and some water and I mixed it equal parts. I did one cup of water and one cup of vinegar and then I added it to a Dollar Tree spray bottle. I put a funnel in the spray bottle and then I poured my mixture in there and I made a mess. <laughs> I spilled it all over the place, but that's okay. If you're gonna spill something, spilling a cleaning solution is a great thing to spill. Now I have this cleaning solution that I can use on my windows. Let's go back to the newspaper. I don't see newspapers very often nowadays. You might get the ad that comes in the mail, but not like in the good old days, right? Where you got the newspaper every single day. Well, this is an alternative that you can use for newspaper. You know when you go to the store and you buy something fragile, a vase, a jar, and they wrap it up in this butcher paper? Well, we're gonna use this butcher paper as a substitute for newspaper today. So I went outside and I sprayed my window in my all natural cleaning solution. And then I took this paper and I began to clean off my window. Paper is effective in reducing streaks and leaving a clean finish because the paper fibers act as a mild abrasive that can remove dirt and grime without scratching the glass surface. You can see that this butcher paper is doing a great job because look at how dirty it is. 
After I had wiped down my entire window, it looked fantastic. There were no streaks anywhere. So not only does this cleaning solution work magically, but the newspaper still works as well, which is perfect for cleaning and it also makes me feel very nostalgic. I have a whole bunch of wooden spoons that I use to cook with on a, a regular basis and typically I just wash them off and then put them in the dishwasher and call it a day, right? Well, did you know that your wood spoons can harbor bacteria and oils? So what I do is on the occasion, probably once a month or so, I get a pot of boiling water and I put my spoons in this boiling water. I'll leave them in there for 20 minutes. Boiling water can reach a temperature that's high enough to disinfect and remove any dirt or particles on the surface of the wood spoons. After the 20 minutes was up, I removed my spoons and look at this water, you guys. It's so dirty. And in my mind, these were clean spoons going into the water. So once a month, take your wooden spoons, put them in some boiling water. This will sanitize them and remove those hidden dirt, oils, and liquid. Between the six of us living at this house, there is always at least one pair of shoes that needs to be cleaned. This easy cleaning solution helps me clean these dirty shoes every single time. All you need to do is get a spoonful of baking soda, a spoonful of dish detergent, and a spoonful of toothpaste. Put it into a bowl and mix it up until it becomes a paste. Before I put it on, let me show you what these shoes look like before. They are dirty, they have scuffs on them and some discoloration. Now we're gonna take our paste and a toothbrush and we're going to wipe this cleaning solution all over these shoes. I'm going to scrub really hard with my toothbrush. Then I took a clean cloth and simply wiped away this paste. Look at the difference between the shoe that I've cleaned and the shoe that I haven't cleaned. It's a dramatic difference. So I moved on to the second shoe and I repeated that same process until I got these beauties. Look at how much better these shoes look, you guys. It was so easy to do. It took me maybe two minutes. It was super cheap and zero effort to make these shoes look brand new. I try and use all natural cleaning solutions as often as I can. So when I had this cutting board that was looking a little dirty, I thought, what can I use to clean off this cutting board? So what I did was I got some salt and I sprinkled it all over the surface of this cutting board. Then I took a lemon and I cut it in half and I rubbed it all over the salt and the cutting board. I pressed really hard over the stains with the lemon. The salt and lemon work together to naturally clean and disinfect a cutting board. Once I was done cleaning my cutting board, I took it over to the sink and I rinsed it off and then dried it with a towel. There's a big difference in the way it looked from before to now. Is it 100% perfect? No, but I know that it is very clean and sanitized. I know that the lemon and the salt disinfected this cutting board and it's ready to be used. I took the other half of this lemon and I decided I wanted to clean my stainless steel sink. So I rubbed that lemon all over the sink. Lemons are acidic and the acid in the lemons has a cleaning effect when it comes into contact with certain types of substances like grease and dirt. So when you use a lemon to clean a sink, the acid in the lemon can help break down and remove stains and grime, leaving your sink looking clean and fresh. I took my sprayer and I sprayed off all the lemon and look at how clean and shiny my sink looks. I didn't need to use any harsh abrasives or harsh chemicals to clean the sink, the other half of the lemon did an amazing job. So while we're on the lemon kick, let's move up to the faucet. Now my faucet can get hard water spots and stains on it, so I took my lemon and I rubbed it all over this faucet. I cleaned the front and the back and the sides of my faucet and I also cleaned the sprayer with the lemon. Then I let it sit for a few minutes and then I took a washcloth and I wiped off all of the lemon from my faucet. I am not kidding you when I say that this faucet has never looked so good. 
It is sparkling clean and the acid in the lemon removed the water spots and stains. It's amazing to think the lemon alone cleaned this faucet to make it look brand new. So now that I have all of my segments of lemon, what I'm gonna do is put them down the drain. My mom used to do this growing up. She would save all the peels from the oranges and the lemons and the limes and she would put them down into the garbage disposal. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put all of my lemon peels down the garbage disposal. But before I turn it on, I'm going to grab a handful of ice cubes and put those down in the garbage disposal as well. Once both of these things were in my garbage disposal, I turned it on. Putting the ice cubes in the garbage disposal can help sharpen the blades and remove any buildup or debris. By doing this, my garbage disposal blades are nice and sharp and it smells amazing. It smells like lemons. So if you're looking for a cheap, easy, natural cleaning solution, lemons are awesome. My washing machine needs to be cleaned and I will be the first to admit that I do not clean it very often because if your washing machine isn't clean, then your clothes and your towels and everything else are not gonna be clean either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these tablets. These are some deep cleaning washing machine tablets. They are from OrTube. I have a 48 pack, which is a two year supply. And all I need to do is remove the tablet from the packaging and pop it into my washing machine. Now I'm going to set the cycle to clean washer. If you don't have that cycle, you can put it on a very hot cycle or heavy duty. These deep cleaning tablets work on all washers. They're perfect for high efficiency or standard top load washing machines. They're eco-friendly and the natural effervescent foamy tablets are septic safe. I love that it cleans and deodorizes your washing machine because sometimes there's some funky smells that come out of the washing machine and this will take those smells away. Each package contains a two year supply of 48 tablets, which is so much better than other competitors that only have five or six tablets. Plus these little tablets work twice as well. So check out how sparkling clean my washing machine is now. It looks amazing. It looks brand new. These deep cleaning washing machine tablets are already very affordable, but I have an additional 30% off coupon for you. So head on over to the OrTube storefront and check out all of their amazing cleaning solutions. Do you ever get dust on your drapes or on some upholstered furniture and you're like, how do I clean this off? Well, I have a solution for you. What you're gonna to wanna to do is get a lint roller. A lint roller will remove this dust and debris easily. Simply roll the adhesive covered end over the furniture, lampshades, and other items to collect dust. This hack works especially well for fabrics, upholstery, and drapes. So the next time you're wondering, how should I clean that upholstered piece? Remember that a lint roller will do a great job. I use these scrubbing brushes from the Dollar Tree all over my house. I use them in the bathroom, I can use them to clean my floors, but mainly I use them to clean my dishes. Instead of just putting soap in the handle, we're gonna make a cleaning solution that's gonna work just a little bit better. So what I did was I took a quarter cup of dish soap and half a cup of vinegar. I put those two items in a bowl and mixed them together and then I attempted to pour this cleaning solution into the handle and I spilled. <laughs> it went all over the place. But that's okay because it's a cleaning mixture and so we can wipe that up. Once it was in the handle, now I can clean my dishes. The combination of the soap and the vinegar is amazing because it combines the grease cutting power of dish detergent with the acidic properties of vinegar. The dish soap helps to break down and remove dirt and grime while the vinegar helps to dissolve tough stains and break down mineral deposits. Some of us have sensitive skin in our family and so I try and use laundry detergent that is free from the perfumes and the dyes. And then also when I use a fabric softener, it's hard to find one that is free of all those things. So instead, what I do is I take some vinegar and I put it in the fabric softener area in my washing machine. Vinegar, specifically white vinegar, works as a fabric softener because it can help break down 
any residue that may be on clothing or towels. Also, did you know that vinegar can remove any traces of that laundry detergent from the fabric during the washing cycle? If you're looking for an all natural fabric softener, vinegar is a great solution. I love having silver pieces, but the downside to that is that they do oxidize. I have this knife that I love. I use it all the time. It's a cheese knife and it oxidizes very frequently. So to bring it back to its illustrious glory, what I use is this Wright's Silver Cream. I take it and I wipe it all over the knife. I scrub it really good on both sides and then on the handle. And once it's covered in this cream, I let it sit for about five minutes. And then I take it over to the sink and I rinse it off. This knife looks amazing. It looks brand new. I've also used this cream on a silver cake stand that I purchased at a thrift store. It was a mess when I bought it, but I just used this cream and now it looks brand new. So if you have a few pieces of silver that have oxidized, try this cream. It will restore them back to its former glory. During the summer here in Florida, it rains every single day about four or five o'clock. And so we have a lot of wet shoes. Well, my father-in-law sent me this next hack of how we can dry our shoes really easily. So what you're gonna need is a lint roller and then you're going to thread your laces from your wet shoes through the lint roller and then tie it into a knot. Now you can take your shoes and put them inside of the dryer and have the lint roller hang on the outside of the dryer. Now your shoes can dry in the dryer. This is great if you have wet shoes or if you've just cleaned your shoes and you want them to dry off easily and not drip all over the place. So thank you, Gary, for sending me this hack. I love it. It works beautifully. I run a pretty clean household, but there are still some places that I miss or forget about. One of those places is around the edges on my stovetop. So what I'm going to do is get a wooden skewer and a paper towel. I got my paper towel wet and I wiped it around the wooden skewer. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to run it around the edge of my stovetop. You guys, I don't even have words. This, what I pull up is, it's just so gross. Like I had no idea that that stuff was even there. I just kept cleaning this and I would move the paper towel around the wooden skewer so I had a fresh clean spot. And I just continued to take this wooden skewer and run it all along the edge of this stove top. You guys, it's pulling up stuff that I didn't even know was there. <gasps> Yikes. So if you look at your stove and you see some grime in the corners or along the edges, this is a great technique for deep cleaning. I'm happy I did this because now my stove top is much cleaner than I thought. Another area in my home that gets dirty all the time is the microwave. And I'm gonna preface this by saying we do have one of those microwave covers to put over the plates when we microwave. However, it doesn't get used all the time. So we have splatters of food all over the microwave. It's dirty and I need to clean it on a regular basis. So what I do is I get a microwave safe container. I put some vinegar and water in this container, equal parts, one cup of each, and then I put it in my microwave. I set the microwave timer for three minutes. Once the time is up, I let this mixture sit in the microwave for about five minutes. The steam will start to release all of that grimy stuff all over your microwave. Once that time was up, I removed my vinegar and water mixture from the microwave and then I got a cloth and I wiped down the microwave. All of these splatters came right off. I didn't have to scrub at all. It just easily wiped right off of the sides and the top of the microwave. This is also a fantastic cleaning solution because again, it's all natural. So you're not putting in any harsh chemicals into an area where food is present. This vinegar and water solution does the job. It cleans the microwave beautifully. I get a lot of hard water buildup on my dishwasher on the front door. So every now and again, what I'll do is I'll take some vinegar. I get about a cup of it and I pour it into the center of the dishwasher. 
Then I run a cycle. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the dishwasher is empty when you run the cycle and the vinegar will clean the inside of the dishwasher. This is what the dishwasher looks like after it's done with the vinegar cycle. Is it perfect? No. Is it about 75% better? Yes. So if you have some mineral or water buildup in your dishwasher, run a cycle with a cup of vinegar. It will make a huge difference. One way that I keep my carpets and my rugs smelling fresh is by getting some baking soda and sprinkling that on these carpets and rugs. Once it's down, you can take your vacuum and vacuum it up. Sprinkling baking soda on the carpet and then vacuuming it up is a great way to deodorize and freshen up your carpet. Baking soda is a natural deodorizer that can help absorb and neutralize odors. It's also a cheap, easy, natural way to clean your carpets and rugs. The frames at the Dollar Tree are one of the most underrated items that they have. I absolutely love the frames that they have there. When I was there the other day, I saw this royal blue frame that had a gold accent around it. I thought it was so pretty. I hadn't seen it before, so I grabbed one of those. I'm always looking for pretty ways to display and organize my jewelry. So this frame is gonna help us to create a jewelry display. The other item that I got at the Dollar Tree was this metal oval. They had a variety of shapes. They had ovals and stars and hearts. And what we're gonna do with our frame and our metal oval is create a magnetic jewelry organizer. The first thing that I did was I cut away the thin rope from the metal oval then I got some scrapbook paper. This scrapbook paper matches the frame with that beautiful royal blue, the navy blue, and it has a little bit of gold in it. What I did was I removed the back from my frame and then I took the paper that was inside and put it over my scrapbook paper. Then I got a pencil and I traced around this paper to give me a template. And then I cut out my rectangle. Then I took my metal oval and I put it in the center of this rectangle. I need to cut this oval out, but I didn't want any excess cuts or creases. So what I'm gonna be doing is getting out my self-healing mat and an X-Acto knife. I traced around this oval. I took my X-Acto knife and I simply cut along the pencil line. And then I removed the oval from the center of the rectangle. I want to adhere my scrapbook paper to my metal oval. So what I'm going to be using is some spray glue. I sprayed this glue over the top of the oval. Then I took my scrapbook oval and put it over the metal oval and I pressed them both firmly together. For this project, we do not want the glass in the frame. So I carefully removed the glass. Then I took the rectangular scrapbook paper and hot glued it to the back of the frame. Then I took my metal oval and hot glued that in the center. We want to make it appear like the two separate pieces are one cohesive piece of paper. Then I took the backing and reinstalled it into the frame. To hang my jewelry, we are going to be using these Dollar Tree metal clips. They come in a package of four. I put all four of these magnetic clips on the metal oval. Now I can hang a variety of bracelets on these magnetic clips. You could hang some necklaces. You could also get some inspirational quote or pictures and hang them from these magnetic clips. There's a variety of things that you could display. The second Dollar Tree item that we are going to be adding to our display are these magnetic tins. These are so cool because you can store small items in here like small earrings, studs, little rings. So I added some of those to these magnetic tins and then I placed it directly in the center. Look at how cute this magnetic jewelry display frame is. What a fun and unique way to display a bunch of your items they stick on there so easily. I mean, they just pop on there. You can move them around a little bit, but I love this. This is a creative way to display your items. This would be a fun project to do with kids. You could customize it and place it in several areas of your home. We are going to be doing more creative hacks with those magnetic tins. They are so cool. So we are going to take advantage of them. 
What I did was I printed off a sign that said kitchen closed. Late at night, sometimes my kids need a reminder that snack time is over. So this is a great reminder and we are going to put it on our fridge. So let's make our sign. I cut out the circle and then I took some hot glue and added it around the inside edge of the magnetic tin lid. Then I took my circular kitchen closed paper and placed it in the center of the tin lid. Then I simply placed the tin lid back onto the container. Now I can take my cute little tin sign and put it on the fridge. It will stick on there beautifully. And it's a great reminder to know that we are done eating for the day. Another sign that I've made that I've put in these magnetic tins is a clean sign. I put this on my dishwasher immediately after I start it. In our house, we get a little confused of what's clean and what's dirty when it comes to the dishwasher. So by putting this on there, it's a great reminder to let everybody know it's time to unload the dishwasher. Now my boys are so great at unloading the dishwasher. That's their job. So when they see the sign in there, they know that it's time to unload the dishwasher. You could make a variety of different signs and sayings and place them throughout your house on any magnetic surface. These magnetic signs are cheap, easy, and great to create little reminders and place them throughout your house. As you guys know, I love artificial flowers and I have so many of them. So I'm always looking for different ways to organize and store them. What we're gonna do this time is we're gonna use this tension rod once again. I'm going to put it in my closet in between some shelves. What I did was I sized it to the size that I needed and pressed it firmly into place. Now I'm doing this on my shelf in my cabinet, but if you had some walls that were close together or perhaps like the back side of your closet, you could put this tension rod in there as well. Then I took my artificial flowers and I placed them between the tension rod and the back part of the cabinet. I put several stems in this area and the tension rod will keep your flowers visible. It will also keep them from getting smashed. You could organize them by different color schemes or seasonality. This is a creative, easy way to take advantage of wall space. I love the way that these flowers are stored. They're convenient to access and this was so easy to do. For our next hack, we are still gonna be using a tension rod, but this time we're going to add one of these Dollar Tree shower hooks to it. What I did was I took these hooks and I added some scissors and tape and a ruler to the hooks. You could add any kind of crafting item that you want to store. Once all of my crafting supplies were on the shower curtain rings, all I did was I took them and I slid them onto the tension rod. You could add so many of these shower curtain rings to the tension rod. You could store a huge variety of items. Once they were on there, all I did was I took my tension rod and I placed it in that same area between the cabinet. Now I can see exactly where my crafting supplies are. I can easily take them off of the shower curtain ring or off of the tension rod. This is another great hack for crafting organization. I love it when my car smells fresh and clean, but a lot of times I think that those air fresheners that you can purchase at the store have a really artificial smell and I don't really love it all that much. So we are going to make our own car freshener. What I'm gonna do is get a Dollar Tree clothespin, three white pom-poms and some essential oils. First, I'm gonna take my essential oils and I'm going to add several drops to each of the pom-poms you want to make sure that the scent is strong enough, so add an ample amount. Then I added a line of hot glue to the top of the clothespin and then placed my pom-poms into the hot glue. You guys, this smells so good. And all I have to do now is take it and go put it in my car. You can clip it onto the air conditioning vents. You could put it underneath your seat or the back portion of the floor mat. Instead of smelling harsh chemicals that come from the store-bought air fresheners, now you can make your car smell amazing with essential oils. It really does, it smells so good. This is, this is a great hack, I love this one. Another very versatile item that you can purchase from the Dollar Tree are these carabiner hooks. These are great for so many items. What we're gonna do first is put some hair scrunchies on here. I took a whole bunch of hair ties and put it onto this carabiner hook. 
My daughter plays tennis and she always needs to put her hair back. And so having some scrunchies easily accessible for her is awesome. So what I did was I took this carabiner hook and I just attached it to her tennis bag. Now she always has easy access to a scrunchie. Another item that you can put on these carabiner hooks are some bracelets or some rings, any kind of necklace, jewelry. That would be fantastic. I slid my bracelets onto this hook and now I can take it and go back to my closet and hang it up on one of the hooks there. If you're low on storage space for jewelry, using a carabiner hook is a fantastic solution. Shoe organizers are great in so many different ways. Of course, you can organize your shoes, but we are gonna use our Dollar Tree shoe organizer to help us pack our suitcase. So what I'm gonna do is lay out my shoe organizer and then get a whole bunch of bathroom items. I put my hair straightener, dryer, soaps, lotion, toothpaste, conditioner, shampoo, all kinds of items in the slots that were meant for shoes. And because these shoe organizers are fabric, I can simply fold it in half, which is a great way to save space. And then I placed it inside of my suitcase. Once I reach my final destination, I can pull this shoe organizer with all of my essentials in it right out and it's already organized and ready to be used. My gift bags and gift paper can get disorganized in a hurry. So today we are going to organize them in a very unique way what I'm gonna use is a metal pant hanger. I hung up this hanger lengthwise and then I added my gift bags to the metal rods. You can add a whole bunch of gift bags to one of these metal rods and then I draped the gift paper over the remaining metal rods. You could color coordinate these items, you could organize your bags and paper by season. Suspending these items on this pant hanger will keep your bags and paper from creasing getting tangled up or bent. It's also a very great way to see what kind of bag you have. If you need a birthday bag or if you have a birthday bag, it's great to have everything visible so you can see exactly what you have. This next home hack has been requested by a few of you. So let's put this to the test. It's another jewelry organizer hack and it involves thin necklaces and some regular old plastic straws. So what I'm gonna do is take my necklace, unclasp it, and then slide it through the center of the straw. I pulled out the necklace on the other end and then clasped it back together. It worked beautifully for two of my thinner necklaces. I did try and stick a thicker gold chain in there and it didn't work. So it's fantastic for your thin necklaces. This is great to keep them separated. That way they don't get tangled up if you have to put them in your purse or if you're traveling, put them in a suitcase. These straws are fantastic to keep your jewelry organized. So thank you everyone who suggested this. It was a great hack. The Dollar Tree has some fantastic organizational items and they are very affordable. We are going to take this wall mounted wire rack and we are going to use it to help organize the mess that's underneath the sink in the bathroom. I screwed this wall mounted wire rack to the upper left hand side of my cabinet. This is unusable vacant space that can help us organize some items. It's also really sturdy so you don't need to worry about it falling down. It can hold heavier items. So the first item that we're gonna put on this wire rack is a hair dryer, a curling iron, and a flat iron. These bulky items take up a chunk of space. Having them organized like this frees up valuable space in my cabinet. It's also easy to find the item I need quickly because I can see exactly where it's located. My brushes also have a little hole in the handle which makes it so convenient to hang on these hooks. So I organized all of my large brushes and then I took a wide tooth comb and I put that on the hook as well. Hanging the hair brushes and the combs on this wire rack can give me more drawer space, which will make my area more organized and clutter free. Now my brushes are within arm's reach. No more digging through the drawers or searching through the cabinets. The Dollar Tree also has these really pretty gold wire baskets. We're gonna take two of these and hang them on the rack. I place them side by side, 
small baskets in bathroom organization can allow you to utilize even the smallest nooks and crannies effectively. These smaller baskets are perfect for organizing your hair accessories, your razors, nail polish. I'm going to be putting in some body scrubs and some other items in my basket. By incorporating small baskets into your bathroom organization, you'll optimize space and enjoy the ease of finding and accessing your essentials. The Dollar Tree has these Lucite frames. They're five by seven and seven by five. You can get the horizontal and the vertical size. I picked up a couple of these and we are going to use these in my drawer organization for our spices. So I took these frames, I placed them right next to each other and made sure they were slanting downward. Then I took my spices. I organized them from savory to sweet. You could fill up an entire drawer full of these affordable frames and organize all the spices you have. It would be very convenient to put these in a drawer right next to your stovetop. That way you can easily access the spices that you need when you're cooking. We're gonna organize another kitchen item in our drawers. This time I'm gonna grab some measuring spoons and measuring cups. I'm gonna put the measuring spoons in my drawer first, and then I'm going to take my Lucite frames and put them over the top. Then I took several measuring cups and placed them on top of the frames. Because the frames are slanted, you can place several measuring cups on the top of the frames. If you're looking for an effective way to store small kitchen items efficiently, these Lucite frames are a fantastic, affordable option. I'm always looking for efficient yet pretty ways to organize my jewelry. So while I was at the Dollar Tree, I saw these beautiful white and gold frames. And then close to the frames, they had some contact paper in the exact same color scheme, this white and gold. So I got some of that as well. What we're going to do is we're going to make a display frame for our jewelry. So the first thing that I did was I removed the back from the frame. I placed the backing over the top of the contact paper, then traced around the back of the frame to get the correct size I needed. Next, I took a pair of scissors and cut out the rectangle. Now I can simply remove the protective coating on the back of the contact paper and then place the paper on the front. I pressed it firmly so it stuck well. Now that the contact paper is in place, I can put it back into the frame. Now we've created a beautiful display for our jewelry. Now, of course, we need some hooks to hang the jewelry. So I have some Walmart suction hooks. They come in a package of two. You can also use some command hooks if you want some smaller hooks. I just pressed these suction hooks to the front glass on the frame, and now I can hang my jewelry. I placed a whole lot of necklaces on these hooks. You could put some bracelets on these hooks or some rings. These hooks can hold a fair amount of necklaces. Something else you could do is use these hooks to display one statement piece of jewelry. So I took a large necklace and I placed it on the top of both hooks. This frame will highlight this stunning piece of jewelry, which will turn it into a focal point when you display it. This is so pretty, it was affordable and really easy to make. One organizational item that can be used in many different ways is an over the door shoe organizer. You guys know that I love to create floral arrangements and I have a whole lot of artificial flowers that always are in need of organization. So what I'm gonna do is take my faux flowers and I'm going to put them inside of the pockets of the shoe organizer. You can arrange them by color. You can coordinate them by a specific floral type. You can arrange them by different seasons. It's so convenient to see the florals at one time. You can select the flower you want and when you're done, you can place it back in the pocket. Another item that you can organize in these shoe organizers is some ribbon. I have a ton of ribbon and I'm always looking for the right one. 
So I put a whole bunch of ribbon in these shoe organizers. Again, you can categorize them by color, by size, by season. If you have some thread or yarn, this is a great way to organize those items as well. It's so convenient to be able to see the items that you need and then return it to the right slot. Having these items streamlined will definitely help you in the future. You'll be able to save time by knowing exactly where your items are. Tension rods, you guys. These are fantastic for storage and organization and you can pick them up very affordably at Walmart. We are going to use these tension rods to organize some items in our pantry. Now I like to use these Dollar Tree storage containers for my cereal and snacks. Here in Florida, we have a lot of humidity. So these containers are fantastic to keep everything fresh. What we're gonna do is organize them better because as you can see, they take up a lot of space. So instead of keeping them on the shelf in my pantry, we are going to organize them vertically. So I'm gonna take both of my tension rods and I'm going to slide them in place in between the upper and lower shelf. Now I can take my containers and stack them on top of each other. I placed one forward and then the next one backwards and just continued until everything was organized. Stacking them vertically takes advantage of the upper portion of your cabinets, which creates more usable space on your shelf. Another way that we can use these tension rods to help create some more storage space in our pantries or even in a closet is to place them above a door. Again, this is unusable space, space that's up and out of the way. So I placed my tension rod across the door. Now I can take some light, soft items and place them on these tension rods. I put some paper towels and some napkins on this tension rod. Now you are gonna make sure that you put light items on there because if by chance this tension rod does fall down, you don't want anything to land on you. So paper towels and napkins, they're great. They will stay organized and in place right above your door. You're taking advantage of space that you wouldn't have had before and you're freeing up shelf space or floor space that you otherwise wouldn't have. An alternative storage solution would be to stack these paper towels and napkins vertically, just like we stacked our food containers. I love using tear trays to organize all of my pretty items, especially when the tear tray is pretty itself. I have this lucite and gold tiered tray that's gonna help me display some pretty items. In my closet, I have some sunglasses and some large bracelets that I can place on this tiered tray. And then on the top, I can put my beautiful bottles of perfume. You can use tiered trays or small dishes to organize your small items, jewelry, accessories, or even keys. Organizing these items beautifully can turn regular storage into a stunning focal point. This tiered tray is also going to be fantastic to organize some of my crafting items, like my craft paint. I have a ton of craft paint and I'm always rummaging around trying to find the right color. So putting my craft paint on this tiered tray is fantastic. I put around 40 bottles of craft paint on this tiered tray, so it holds a whole lot. Another thing that I love about this tiered tray is that it has handles, so you can just pick up your crafting item, take it to the location you need, and when you're done, you can bring it back and put it away. So not only is this tiered tray beautiful, it's functional as well. The door from the garage is right in the laundry room. So everyone comes in that door and takes off their shoes. You guys, <laughs> it's such a mess. I didn't clean anything up in here. This is literally what this laundry room floor looks like on a regular basis. It's a minefield. You walk in that area and you better watch out because if you take one wrong move, one wrong step, you are gonna twist an ankle. This is not good, <laughs> so we really need to clean it up. So what I'm gonna do is get a shoe organizer rack. This is a great organizer rack because it is very thin so I can place it up against the wall. It's also metal, so if there's some mud or dirt that gets on there, I can wipe it off easily. This shoe rack holds a whole bunch of pairs of shoes so everybody can put several pairs on the shoe rack. It only took me a couple of minutes to organize these shoes, but look at how much better the floor in the laundry room looks 
I feel so much better now knowing that I can walk into my home from the garage and not have to go through an obstacle course of shoes and possibly fall on my face. Okay, so these shoe organizer racks are great for shoes, of course, but we can use them for other items as well. If you need extra space in a pantry, these racks are fantastic for your boxed food. I placed plenty of pastas, I've got macaroni and cheese, I have some cake mixes, some stuffing, some muffin mixes, all kinds of things that I could place on this shoe organizer rack. The nice thing is, is that it's portable, so you can pick it up, move it around. You can put it on top of a shelf. You can put it on the floor in a closet. So you can use the shoe organizer rack in a multitude of different ways. Under the sink organizers are fantastic ways to organize all of those random items that are underneath your sink. We already organized a whole bunch of things underneath the sink in our bathroom, but we could do a little more organizing. So I'm gonna take this under the sink organizer and we're going to put some toilet paper over the top and then it has a little pull out shelf. So I pulled that out and I put a whole bunch of soaps on this pull out shelf and then I just pushed it right back in. Now I have more things organized underneath my sink, which is so convenient to be able to locate everything I need. And again, this does free up extra space in your cabinet. Of course, you can organize all your kitchen cleaning supplies as well. So on the top shelf, I placed some garbage sacks. I put a whole bunch of melamine sponges on there. I have some scrub brushes and a pumice stone. All these fit fantastically on the top of this organizer. And then on the pull-out shelf down below, I put all of my cleaning supplies. I just stack them all up on there. And the nice thing about having a pull-out shelf is that you're not gonna lose anything at the back. Sometimes I cannot locate items, but having this pull-out shelf is really nice because you can access your items easily. There are also hooks on the corners of the storage organizer. So I can take my microfiber cloths and hang them from the hooks. This is a great spot to hang damp rags so they can air dry. Now that everything is in place on my organizer, I can put it back underneath the sink in my kitchen. This is a convenient way to store all of my kitchen cleaning items in a very streamlined and organized way. So while we're here in the kitchen, let's organize our rags and placemats. The way we're gonna do that is with a drawer divider. This drawer divider is so cool. It is adjustable, so you can make it the size that you need to fit inside of your drawer. All you need to do is pull it, and there's a little tab that you press up and press down to lock it in place. So I put it in my drawer. Now I can take my rags and place them in the front part of the drawer, leaving an ample amount of space in the back for my placemats. They fit in there perfectly, now when I open and shut this drawer, things are not going to shift around and roll around. The drawer divider will keep everything in place. Let's go back and revisit that over-the-door shoe organizer. If you have little ones in your life, if you've got kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, little neighbor children, they are going to have toys. We have so many toys in our house and I'm always looking for a more efficient way to store them. So what I did was I took a whole bunch of little stuffies and I placed them in each of the pockets of this organizer. This is perfect for a game room, a playroom, a kid's bedroom. They can see which toy they are looking for and then they can also help with cleanup because it is really easy to put your toys back into the slots on the shoe organizer. As you guys know, I do love to spray paint. <laughs> I spray paint things all the time. So I have a huge collection of spray paint. Right now they're in a basket and it's really hard to find the spray paint that I want. So putting them in this shoe organizer is so much more efficient for me. I'm gonna organize it by color. I can place each can of spray paint in the pockets. I can see exactly which spray paint I need. I can pull them in and out very easily. It's much easier to manage all of my spray paint utilizing this shoe organizer. This shoe organizer would be fantastic in a closet or bathroom to organize all of your towels. If you have a whole bunch of towels, you can roll them up and put them inside of the pockets. Hand towels, wash rags. If you wanted to put this on a door in a pantry, you could organize all of your dish rags in here. 
You can even put in a few bottles of cleaning supplies in the mesh pockets. If you're looking for organization in your laundry room, your closet, or your pantry, these over-the-door shoe organizers are awesome. Now, no party is complete without a photo. So we are going to set up a quick photo backdrop that's going to be fantastic for any one of your events. What you're gonna need is a tension rod, a shower curtain rod, or a curtain rod. I'm using a shower curtain rod, so what I'm gonna do is size it so it fits snug in an entryway. I grabbed a roll of wrapping paper and I clamped the cut end to my shower curtain rod. Then I let the wrapping paper fall to the floor. The weight of the roll of wrapping paper on the floor will keep it in place. However, you could get some blue painter's tape or just some regular tape and tape it down to the floor if you wanted to as well. Next, grab some scissors and poke them right into the center of the wrapping paper. You want it to be about face height and it does not need to be a clean cut. You want this to look like someone is bursting out of a gift. So any jagged, craggly edges are fantastic. Make the hole big enough so that you can have a whole head or two poking through. Now, each one of your family members or guests can take an adorable holiday photo with their heads poking through this festive wrapping paper. You could even have some themed props for people to hold. You could have some cute antlers or presents or even candy canes. What a fun, cheap, and simple backdrop. This is an easy way to create a photo station so each one of your guests can leave the party with a photo to remember this special event. I have the hardest time wrapping awkwardly shaped gifts. For instance, a candle. Now you could get a gift bag and put your candles in there, but that can get pretty expensive after a while. So let me show you a more economically affordable way to wrap these awkward shapes. Get your wrapping paper, cut it large enough that it will go all the way around your candle. You're also going to want to leave some excess at the top and at the bottom. Get a piece of double-sided tape and put it on one of the edges of the wrapping paper. Then place the candle in the center of the paper and roll the paper around the candle. Then slide the candle out. Fold the bottom of the wrapping paper about an inch and a half from the bottom. Get some scissors and cut slices one inch apart from each other. The center section should be the height of the candle and then you're gonna wanna fold the excess paper at the top down, snip off the corners at the top, open it up, fold it again, and snip off the other corners so you have four diamond cutouts. Slide the candle back into the paper and then fold the one inch segments down to cover the bottom of the candle and tape them in place. Once the bottom is taped, place it right side up, get a segment of your choice of ribbon and tie it around the top. Because we cut the diamonds in the paper, it will fold onto itself without crinkling or ripping the paper. This was so easy, so cute, and much more affordable than buying a gift bag. Do you ever lose the top or the bottom part of a cardboard box? I do, and so I have a lot of mismatched lids and bottoms. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create some smaller boxes out of one of these lids. What I did was I took the lid and I folded it three quarters of the way until it touches the top of the fold. I opened it back up and I folded the other side in the exact same way. I went about three quarters of the way up the box until it touched the edge. Then I opened the box back up. You can see the creases that we made. What we're gonna do is get a pair of scissors and we're gonna cut along these creases. There's two on each side of the box. So I just cut along these edges on the first side and then I did the exact same thing on the other creases on the other side. Now I can fold this box over and voila, you have a smaller box. How cool is this, you guys? We made a brand new box out of a lid. So now if you ever have those tops or bottoms of cardboard boxes floating around, now you know you can transform them into a different size box in a few seconds. Now that we have our newly formed box, we are going to decorate the front of it with a Christmas tree ribbon. 
What I did was I got a segment of double-sided tape and I placed it in the center of the box. Then I chose some white velvet ribbon. I pressed the end of the ribbon to the top of the tape and then I zigzagged down the center of the box. You'll start out with zigzags that are shorter and you'll get longer and longer as you go down the length of the tape. This will create your Christmas tree. Once your zigzags reach the bottom, cut the end of the ribbon, do one final press down the center of the tape, and now you have a festive Christmas tree ribbon to decorate this plain box. Again, that was so easy to do, and how festive is this adorable Christmas tree? You can embellish it even a little bit more. You could put a star at the top, or you could put some little ornaments on it. I think it looks cute just the way it is, and it was a piece of cake to design. A quick and easy way to decorate for the holidays is with some festive plates and bowls. I have a whole bunch in my kitchen in the glass fronted cabinets. There's such a simple way to bring in that holiday flair. If you can't find any Christmas dishware that fits in with your color scheme or it's just out of your budget, let me show you a quick easy way to get a festive plate. All I did was I cut some stickers out on my Cricut Maker. I have a snowflake and a Christmas tree, and then I have two white plain plates. I placed the snowflake sticker in the center of the plain plate, and then I moved on and put the Christmas tree in the center of the second white plain plate. And just like that, now I have some festive holiday dishware. You can get stickers for so cheap at pretty much any craft store, or even the Dollar Tree right now. You can theme these so easily. Get a sticker that goes along with your Christmas color scheme. And the best part is once Christmas is over, you can just remove the sticker and you've got your plain plate back. I have a lot of holiday entertaining coming up and I want to make my Christmas tablescapes as beautiful as I can possibly make them. I'm gonna show you how to fold a cloth napkin into a Christmas tree. I'm going to use this gorgeous, frosty, wintry cloth napkin. This napkin is one that I created and it is available on my website. To turn this gorgeous napkin into a Christmas tree, I flipped it over, folded it in half, and then folded it in half once more. Turn it so it's on an angle, and then I began to fold up each corner of the folds to the top. I flipped it over and folded it into a triangular shape. Flip it once more and then tuck each of the corners of the flaps underneath the pocket above. And just like that, we have folded a cloth napkin into a Christmas tree. This little cloth napkin Christmas tree can be stood up. You could put it right side up on a plate. Of course, you could lay it down. You could top it off with a star, or you could even create some place cards and tuck them right inside of the folds of the Christmas tree. This festive Christmas tree would be a unique touch to put at any place setting. The link to this cloth napkin will be in my description box. Now let's move on to wrapping gifts. I have the hardest time keeping track of my scissors and my tape when I'm wrapping gifts. I don't know if you have the same problem, but inevitably I'm gonna lose one or the other. So I'm gonna give you two options of how to keep these items together. The first option is to either get some ribbon, string, or yarn and tie it around your scissors. I just tied it into a knot and then on the other end of my ribbon, I tied it around the tape. Now, if you find the scissors, you know that the tape is going to be attached to the opposite end. Now, option number two is to get a plastic container. My container is from the Dollar Tree and it has some dividers in it so I could put some small scissors on one side, some tape on the other, and then I also put some ornament hooks in one of the dividers. Ornament hooks I lose on a regular basis, so it's nice to have all three of these items in one spot. You just put the lid on it and then you can carry it with you from room to room and you will not lose your scissors, tape, or ornament hooks. 
Next, we're gonna create a cheap and easy centerpiece that looks so expensive. What you're gonna need is two Dollar Tree bases. I have a larger one and a medium sized one. And then you're gonna need two ornaments. Mine are from the Dollar Tree. These are little pine cones, they're adorable. They have some berries at the top with little pine cones. What I did first was I cut the string off the top of the ornaments because we do not need that anymore. Then I filled up the bottom half of the vase with water. Next, grab your ornament. You're gonna wanna make sure that your ornament can get stuffed in the vase and get stuck in the middle. So get one that's the perfect size and get one that's like this where it's a little more malleable so you can press it in there and it's not gonna break. So what I did was I just put it down in the center of the vase. Once it was stuck in the middle, I filled the top with water. Now, if your ornament does not get stuck in the middle, when you add water to the top, it will float to the top. So if you want your ornaments floating on the top, you can do it that way. But if you want it in the center like mine, get one that's the perfect size. Once my first display was finished, I moved on to my second. I did the exact same thing. I put water in the bottom of the vase, pressed my ornament into the vase until it was right in the center and then topped it off with water. We want to add a sparkling touch to the top, so I got six tea lights, and I placed three of these tea lights at the top of each of the vases. These float. You can use little tea lights like this, or you can get a bigger floating candle and place that at the top as well. Then I just lit these candles up, and I love the warm glow that it adds to these vases. You could have a whole row of these going down a tablescape. You could also put them on an island. You could scatter them around a food buffet. There are so many places that these beautiful holiday vases could be displayed. You could also easily theme them into your color scheme with the ornaments that you choose. Because these items were from the Dollar Tree, it was very affordable, but they look very expensive. These would be a perfect addition to spruce up any holiday decor. So while we're on the subject of beautifying our tablescapes, we are going to take another cloth napkin and fold it into a different design. This cloth napkin, again, is a design that I created and it's on my website. I love the poinsettias and the white berries and the gorgeous green leaves that are on these napkins. They are elegant and beautiful. We are going to turn this cloth napkin into a bow. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is fold the napkin in half on a diagonal, take the tip and fold it in. Then you're going to fold the napkin three times. Flip it around and fold the ends over on both sides. Grab a napkin ring and slide the end of the bow through the napkin ring and then slide that napkin ring right up to the center. And just like that, you've created a beautiful, festive napkin bow. These bows look so elegant on the center of my place settings. What brings in the elegance factor is the napkin itself, but also the napkin ring. Because of the crystal and gold, it makes this napkin look like a showstopper. This stunning napkin bow will surprise and delight those dining at your table and make your tablescape look one of a kind. Here's an easy hack that will help you to roll out your wrapping paper. I took a broom, but you could get a mop or if you have a long pole, you could use that too. I removed the broom portion of it because that's dirty and we do not want it on our table. So once that portion had been taken off, I got my wrapping paper and I slid the pole through the center. Then I poked the pole through the slats on the chairs that surround my breakfast table. This will hold the pole in place while you roll out the wrapping paper for your gifts. You can roll the exact size that you want now and it's not going to roll away. Your wrapping paper is going to stay where it needs to be so you can measure it out easily. This is definitely a hack that I plan on using this year. 
I know that Christmas is on its way when I walk into the craft store and I get a waft of cinnamon from those cinnamon pine cones. I just absolutely love it. Cinnamon to me is a holiday scent. So what we're gonna do is get some cinnamon sticks and when we're packing up our holiday decor this year, we're gonna put some of these cinnamon sticks in with our storage bins. So when you open up those boxes next year, your house will get a beautiful scent of cinnamon, which will let you know that Christmas is on its way. I love the way the ornaments look bunched up together. You can get some cheaper ornaments and bunch them together to get a more substantial look. So I have two ways that you can do this. The first is to get a pipe cleaner and thread it through the top of the ornament. Put as many as you would like on this pipe cleaner. I'm gonna do three ornaments right now. Once they've been threaded onto the pipe cleaner, you twist the pipe cleaner together and now you can wrap it around your tree. Using a pipe cleaner is great because you can get it in a variety of different colors. You could get a white one if you had a flock tree. You could use a green one if you had a pine tree. So you can color coordinate those to go along with your holiday color scheme. If you don't want to use a pipe cleaner, you can use a zip tie. Just take the end of the zip tie and thread it through the top of the ornaments and then attach the ends together. You can get an ornament hook you can attach it to the zip tie and then you can hang this ornament bunch on your tree. By grouping ornaments together, you can get a big look for a small price. Do you ever have something long and thin like a lip gloss or a mascara that you want to wrap but you just don't know how to? Get a piece of wrapping paper. You could even use scrapbook paper. Fold one edge and then fold your paper in half twice. Next, take the top of the paper and make a fold and do the exact same thing on the bottom of the paper. Get some scissors and cut off the corners very similarly to the way that we cut off the corners when we wrapped our candle. You're gonna to wanna to do two on each side. After you're done with that, unravel it, put some double-sided tape on the folded side press the edges together and then open it back up. Then you can take your lip gloss or your mascara and put it inside. Next, you're gonna get some ribbon and tie it around each end. Because we made those cuts in the wrapping paper, it folds nicely without tearing the paper. This is a simple and easy way to wrap awkwardly shaped items without using a gift bag, which makes this very economical. Plus, look at how cute this is. It's absolutely adorable. Here's a way to wrap a gift with a gift. That sounds a little odd, but trust me, it works so beautifully. You could get a cloth napkin, which is what I'm gonna use, or you could even get a scarf, and we're gonna use this to wrap up our gift. So I took my cloth napkin, I placed the small gift box in the center, I'm going to fold the napkin over the box and tuck it underneath. Then take the other side, wrap it around the box, and tuck it underneath the box again. Then I'm gonna take both sides and bring them up. But before I tie them together, I'm going to get a gift tag, slide it down the end of one side of the napkin. Then I'm going to simply tie the napkin into a knot. Then zhuzh it up a little bit so it looks like a bow. Not only are you giving somebody a gift, but you are wrapping it with a gift as well. So this is a two for one gift that you could give somebody. It's so beautiful, it's so elegant. I know that I would love to receive something like this. I found these adorable mini Christmas wreaths at Hobby Lobby. They come in a package of three and they were 50% off, so they were so affordable. We are going to use one of these wreaths as the center point on a gift. What I did was I got some ribbon and I cut two segments and placed them in a cross. I put the mini wreath in the center of the gift. I wrapped the first ribbon around the wreath, got some double-sided tape to secure the end of the ribbon together. I repeated this process of wrapping the end of the ribbon around the sides and the top of this wreath and I secured it together with double-sided tape I did this on all four sides until all the ribbon was secured to the wreath. 
this is such a unique and beautiful way to wrap your presents. If you wanted to use these presents as a display, they would look beautiful under the tree. You can even get a pretty gift card and place it in the center of the wreath. There's so many ways to decorate with this item. The second thing that we're going to be doing with these mini wreaths is use them as napkin rings. So I got my cloth napkin, I folded it in half, flipped it over, and then I brought each of the ends down towards the center. Then I'm going to fold the top parts towards the middle one more time. I flipped it over, took the mini wreath and slid it over the top of the napkin. I repeated this process with my second napkin. I simply folded it the same way that I did with my first napkin, slid the wreath over the top, and now I have an adorable way to display my napkins. And because these wreaths come in a package of three, they are so affordable and at 50% off, you cannot go wrong. So if you want a creative napkin ring, these would be great. Also, if you want a very affordable napkin ring, these are fantastic as well. I've run out of ornament hooks before in the middle of decorating and it gets really frustrating because you have to stop everything, run to the store, grab some ornament hooks and then come back. Well, I have an alternate solution for just regular ornament hooks. What we're gonna do is get some rubber bands. I have these small rubber bands, and all you need to do is thread the rubber band through the top of the ornament, take one end of the rubber band, thread it through the other side, and now I can hang my ornament on the tree. It just slides right on there, so if you need an alternative option for an ornament hook, simply use a rubber band. If you can't tell by now, I love a beautifully wrapped gift. So what we're gonna do with this gift is we're going to make a triple looped bow and we're gonna do it with just our hands. So I took some ribbon and I began to loop it around my thumb and my pointer finger. I went back to the thumb, back to the pointer finger, back to the thumb and back to the pointer finger until I had done it three times. Then I took the end of the ribbon, put it under the loops, pulled it over the top of the loops and towards the back. There's a place where you can tie it. Once it was tied into a knot, I took it off my fingers and now I have a beautifully looped bow. I put some double-sided tape at the top corner of my gift and I press that bow right into the double-sided tape. You could use any ribbon that you wanted to. You could get a thicker ribbon, a thinner ribbon, and it would make different size bows. This is a unique and beautiful bow that you could place on any present to make it a showstopper. Another way you can wrap a present is by taking some ribbon and start in the center wrap it up on the upper corner, bring it down to the bottom and wrap it around the lower corner. Bring it back to the center and then tie it into a bow. I love the way that you can create unique designs with ribbon. We did so many designs with ribbon in our wrapping today. I can't pick a favorite, I love them all and they make each one of my presents look festive and unique. My goal here is to help you live your life beautifully and sometimes a home hack can help you do that. So if you like these hacks and wanna see more like it, I would love to have you subscribe so I could share those with you. Thank you so much for watching.